Good day, everyone. Hope you are doing well. And let's start with today's story. Wife, 37 female, cheated on me, 37 male, two years ago, and we worked through it. Now I want to leave and I feel guilty. Just over two years ago, my wife cheated on me with a co-worker at her work's Christmas party out of town. She told me immediately the morning after. To say I was devastated would be an understatement. This happened pretty much immediately prior to our country going into lockdown, so we were stuck together. I was in a bit of a daze at the time and just kind of went through the motions. I was angry and miserable, but also wanted to understand why she would do it. Hence, it made sense to work through it at the time, seeing as we were seemingly stuck together. To her credit, though, she did everything possible to make it right. She quit her job, cut off all contact with the coworker, offered to go to therapy slash counseling, and even admitted to what she did publicly. I never asked her to do this, and her mother and sister are very close to her and were appalled. She became much more loving and considerate, and even offered to let me sleep with someone else. I was actually upset with this suggestion, but she was only saying it out of desperation. Fast forward to now, two years later, and by all accounts, things feel like they're back to normal again, at least for her. She's no longer moping around the house, stepping on eggshells in conversation, breaking down when anything regarding cheating happens. She started crying while we were watching a soap where a wife cheats on her husband. Unfortunately, I feel like this return to normalcy has reopened the wound. I think about that night more these days than I did during the previous two years. I don't know why, but I think that society returning to a bit of a pre-2020 state has made me feel like I've gone back in time to that evening. I can't stand to look at her anymore. Not in a she disgusts me way, but in more of a why are you still even here kind of way. I feel guilty for wanting to leave now after all the work she put in, even though logically I know I shouldn't. I feel like I'm the bad guy for wanting to end the marriage after the work she has put in. I know people will be able to easily say she made her bed, etc. But I'm still really struggling with the idea of leaving her. For her sake. I don't hate her for it. But I don't think I love her anymore, and I know this will destroy her. Part of me wishes I was strong enough to have left when it happened. Anyone been in a similar situation or have any advice? Thanks in advance. And the edit. Thanks for all the responses. I feel I had already made up my mind about what I needed to do. But having people validate that I wouldn't be wrong for leaving has given me the push I need. I'll be talking to my wife later today. And now to the update. Thanks to everyone who commented on my previous post. I was surprised how much people cared about my benign marriage problems, but it helped me a lot. I checked this account out today to see what the responses were since last week and was taken aback by the number of people who wanted an update. The day after I posted, I talked to my wife and laid out my feelings. I mentioned some of the points that people in my previous post had articulated very well that resonated with me. I told her, whilst I had forgiven her, I was struggling to forget what happened, and the fact we were seemingly going back to normal had triggered something in me, and now I couldn't stop thinking about it. I said that whilst I do appreciate all the work she put in to try and save our marriage, I couldn't continue anymore. I mentioned a point that someone on my previous post said that whilst we were in lockdown, it almost felt easier to just ignore the issue to some degree, as I would always know where she was or what she was doing. But recently, for the first time since it happened, she's going into town and visiting friends and my mind is just running at 100 miles per hour while she's out. Who is she with? Why is she slightly late home, etc., and I haven't had to confront these feelings before. She cried. I cried. She begged me to stay. I cried again. We spent what felt like hours just sitting together in the living room, not speaking at points. She asked the same questions multiple times. Do I still love her? Will we ever see each other again? Is there anything we can try to make this work? I think eventually she was doing it to delay the inevitable. She's now staying at her mom's house and I'm going to file for divorce. I know it's easy to lay all the blame at her feet when you're on the outside looking in, but I feel just as bad today as I did the day I found out what happened. I am heartbroken again. And know full well I'm going to question myself if I've made the right choice. You can tell me it is the right choice all you like. There's no way I will ever be sure this was the right choice. There are no winners with this crap. Everyone is miserable. Everything sucks. And I'm here reliving the most painful experience of my life for the benefit of a bunch of internet strangers who probably only want to read about the drama and have no reason to care about me personally. I don't mean to come across as bitter. I had lots of genuinely supportive comments on my previous post. I'm just really struggling right now. I won't be using this account or responding here again after this post. Thanks to everyone who commented on my previous post. TLDR. Wife cheated two years ago, originally worked through it, but now I've decided to end the marriage. Everybody loses.
I'm glad, OP, that you chose yourself and your happiness. She might be remorseful and regret her actions, but she can't undo them. Once trust is broken, it's impossible to rebuild. And now to the second story titled, How I Moved On From My Ex. I was asked to post my story by a friend. He said it would give people suffering through infidelity hope. I met my ex, Kara, in early 1994. We clicked fast. We introduced each other to our families and friends within a month. Everyone got along great. At this point, life was perfect. One year after we met, I asked Kara to marry me. She accepted and we started planning our wedding. We decided on a date in August 96. I was walking on air. Kara moved in with me in early March 96. She wanted to find a job quickly and contribute to the household. I wanted her to wait until after the wedding. I made more than enough to easily support us both, but she was adamant. This is when things started to fall apart. She went to work for a design firm in late March. Within a month, she started working. She became distant, showed little affection, and started talking endlessly about her project manager. I should have seen the red flags, but nope. Discovery Day was June 12, 1996. I came home from work early, and yep, found Kara and her project manager Tim in our bed. They both panicked. Tim grabbed his clothes and left. Kara sat on the bed getting dressed and told me we were through. Her reason? He can help my career, you can't. Two weeks later, Kara's best friend Terry called. She hadn't spoken with Kara in a while and wanted to chat. I told her what happened. She thought I was making a joke and started laughing. When I was silent, Terry realized I was serious. Kara had been kind enough to give me her new address and phone number if I ever wanted to chat or visit, like that was going to happen. I gave Terry her address and number. Terry came to my house about two hours later. She is normally very upbeat and smiling. This time she looked like she wanted to murder someone. She came in and gave me a hug. She cut loose with a massive outburst about Kara and how she was a lying witch and that she was done with her. Kara had told Terry that I was physically and emotionally abusive. What a pile of crap. Terry and I started hanging out together. We never really talked a lot before. Turns out we both absolutely love British history and Italian food. Terry went back to school to finish her thesis in the fall of 96. We called each at least once a week, and we also visited each other a few times. In early November, I called and asked if I could visit her on the 9th. She was about to start doing some hard research, and I knew her time was going to be needed for her project. I went to her apartment. When I got there, she asked me if I was calling and visiting her because I wanted to talk to someone, or was it because I liked time with her? This made me chuckle. I told her that my friends live within a mile of me. If I wanted to just talk or hang out, I wouldn't run up my phone bill or drive two hours. I liked being with her. She smiled and we went out for dinner and a movie. When we went back to her place, she turned and kissed me. I was stunned but quickly recovered and kissed her back. Our first date, first kiss, and the first time we slept in the same bed. The other first happened the next day when I left to get breakfast for us and came back to her apartment with an engagement ring. We were married on May 9, 1998. A few months after we were married, my sister called and said that Kara wanted to talk to me. She gave my sister her number. Terry said I should call, so I did. She apologized and wanted to know if we could try again. I thanked her and said I had moved on. At this point, Terry got on the call. Kara ended the call quickly after that. Kara called my sister and said that we had betrayed her. What the hell? Edit. I should have included this in the original post but forgot to. In September, I was visiting Terry and were hanging out at a willow grove in Gypsy Hill Park. We were talking about nothing in particular. She turned to me and took my hand and said, I know you're hurting. I know you're trying to hide it. I want you to know that when you are ready to try again, I will never let go of your hand. I broke at that point. Every emotion that I had been holding back came pouring out. That was when I started to see her as more than a friend. It would be another two months before we became a couple. I believe that that walk was our turning point. And let's take a look at the comments. Someone said to OP, there is nothing better than getting a revenge on your cheating ex by marrying their best friend and living happily. OP replied with, it wasn't planned to be revenge, but I see how it looks like. If Kara had been faithful, Terry and I never would have become a couple. I'm very happy she wasn't. Terry has been the best partner I could ask for. Another user asked, did Tim help Kara's career? Or did he pump and dump? Please tell me it was the latter. It would make an excellent story. OP replied with, They didn't last, big shocker. Last I heard, she's on her third marriage and it's not going well. This was a while ago. Great story indeed. The ex tried to monkey branch but ended up getting tossed aside. And the third story? 
Am I the a-hole for wanting to reveal my affair partner's cheating to her husband? I've been involved in an affair. Actually, my girlfriend partner has been having an affair with me for the last four months. I won't go into detail, but I feel horrible and disgusted. I've always hated cheating, and I never want anything good to come to cheaters. But now I've gotten mixed up in it, and it's eating me alive. So four months ago, I met this woman, she is 29, at my gym, and we pretty much connected instantly. Over the course of four months, we became a couple, went on many dates, and had SEX plenty of times. I was a virgin before I met her, I never had a girlfriend or SEX, and I really felt that life finally kicked in for me and that things would get better. I'm 24, and before I met her, I always felt like a reject and a weirdo because of my lack of success in dating and relationships. The other day, by chance, I found out she has a husband, and I wanted to bury myself on the spot. I felt so bad I can't put it into words. She wanted to have SEX after we had a date, but I lied and told her that I couldn't do it that day because I had something planned. I came home and I was ashamed of myself. I managed to find her husband on social media, and I've been going back and forth on wanting and how to reveal everything. I saved all our chats, pictures, and I even have some receipts from our dinners. I talked to my mom about it, and she told me that since I managed to find him and since I have evidence, I should inform him. My mom told me that he deserves to know, and if it were up to her, she would have revealed everything. But she told me that it's my decision to make. I feel like this woman played both me and her husband, and now I hate myself. In the comments, someone asked OP, I am curious you said you accidentally found out, but how did you find out? You said that you found out by chance and she wanted to have SEX after your date. Did she just drop it on you on your date? OP replied with, No, she got a call and it said hubby with a heart emoji. Two of them were in the picture. And the update, short and straight to the point. I used a fake and anonymous account to send him details and some pictures. I also told him that I have more evidence that I would like to share. He didn't respond until yesterday, where he said that he wants to know more. Today, I sent him everything and explained everything in detail. Turns out he already suspected her of cheating. He just didn't have any proof. He wasn't angry or sad. He was just disappointed a lot. He also thought I would be older. He said that he doesn't blame me. It wasn't my fault. He told me that he owes me big time because he wanted to hire somebody to find out if she was actually cheating. So I actually saved him both time and money. After I explained everything, he was mostly relieved and thanked me for helping him and asked if there is something he could do to repay me. I said that he should help somebody else and that will make us even. He thanked me and told me that I'm a good guy. And that was mostly it. He will file for divorce in case anybody is wondering. I haven't heard from my AP for a few days now, and I'm pretty sure he didn't tell her where he got all the proof from because she didn't call and yell at me. I blocked her on everything anyway after my talk with her husband, and it's time to move forward. Shitty experience from a first relationship, but what can you do? OP, you did the honorable thing. You guys wouldn't believe how many women on hookup sites are actually married. Keep an eye out and stay safe, fellas. And that's it for today. Dear viewers, don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss out. Until next time, bye-bye.